Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real crimes and real people. Please subscribe, give this video many likes, I really appreciate it. Leave a comment down below and also adventure yourself watching my videos. Tell me, what do you think about the cases I cover so far? Which one upset or shocked you the most? And now for today's story. Today I'm telling you the story of Kaylee Haywood, a teenager who was hunted online, deceived and then murdered. Want to know what happened to Kaylee? Let's get started. Kaylee Haywood was born on August 6, 2000. She was from Meesham, Leicestershire in England. Kaylee lived with her parents and siblings. Fast forward 15 years. 2015, Kaylee was a student at Ashby School where she experienced the terror many kids endure regardless of their age. Kaylee was bullied. Like many other teenagers, Kaylee also adventured herself into the tentacles of social media, a world to escape the abuse she suffered at school and also unfortunately look for love. On October 31st, 2015, Kelly met someone online, someone who told her she was beautiful, that he cared for her. He made her feel special, the one and only. Kaylee believed she was in a secret relationship, but in fact, Kaylee was being groomed by a man older than she was and who had plans which include doing things she didn't want to do. This man had made a decision about Kaylee's future and she had no input on it. Friday 13 of November 2015 was a big day for Kaylee. She was finally going to meet Luke that's his name, in person, her secret boyfriend. But she didn't want her parents to know, so she lied. Kaylee told her parents she was going to stay with a friend. Her mother said okay, since Kaylee had a bad day. She was bullied at school, so this would be a way for her to have fun. Kaylee's dad dropped her off at Ipstock Community College. And what they thought would be a fun evening would be their daughter's private hell with no return. Kaylee met and stayed at Luke Harlow's flat in George Avenue. Luke Harlow, 28, was a former media student and was unemployed. He contacted Kaylee on Facebook and while they had never met in person, they exchanged phone numbers and started exchanging texts, thousands of them. He called her a princess, asked her to meet in person but to keep it a secret. While Kaylee wanted to meet him and be with him, Luke wanted a weekend of sex fueled by alcohol. When the two finally met, Luke gave Kaylee a lot of alcohol and he abused her. On November 14th, Kaylee got in touch with her parents and this would be the last time they would talk to her. Kaylee's parents, who hadn't talked to Kaylee, reported her missing. Kaylee's phone and some piece of clothing were found. Her phone was smashed. The person who found it called the last number dial, which was a friend. Her friend called her parents and her parents called the police. The police who was searching for Kaylee believed Kaylee wasn't just missing, she probably was dead. The police asked the public for information in hopes of finding Kaylee and finding out what had happened. The police had access to Kaylee's tablet and saw the messages between Kaylee and Luke. They had a lead and checked Luke Arlo's phone records. Two arrests were made regarding Kaylee's disappearance, Luke Arlo and Stephen Biedman. It wouldn't take long for Kaylee's parents face the harsh reality of what had happened to Kaylee. On November 18th, a body was found in Lakeside Underground in Ipstock, Leicestershire. The body was taken for an autopsy which showed extensive blunt force injuries to the neck and underlying fractures of facial bones. Dental records showed the body belonged to Kaylee Haywood. Stephen Beeman was charged with assault, murder and false imprisoning. Luke Arlo was charged with abuse and false imprisoning. On the night of Kaylee's murder, neighbors heard banging and a girl screaming in fear, mommy. They also saw a man with a bloody face on the location Kaylee's body was found. Kaylee was seen fleeing from Luke's flat in the early hours of Sunday. She was naked from her waist down and she was pinned down. Still, no one called the police. 
Evidence was found on Stephen's jeans. It was bloodstains which matched his and Kaylee's blood. Stephen stated he arrived at Luke's flat and Luke told him he had a bird there. When Stephen saw Kaylee, Kaylee was already drunk and sounded incoherent. He also started drinking a lot and said when he drank, he turned violent and lost control. But most of all, he didn't remember what had triggered to make him snap on Kaylee. Stephen wasn't honest. He knew exactly what he had done and it would take a while for the police to know the truth. Luke wasn't different from Stephen. He too tried to pin what happened on Stephen and the lies began. Luke stated Kaylee had drunk a bottle of wine because she was nervous she was going to meet him. After she arrived at his flat, Kaylee drank a lot of vodka. He and Stephen went to the shop to get more alcohol and that was it. He stated he then fell asleep. When he woke up on Sunday morning, Kaylee wasn't there but her shoes were. He went to see Stephen and Stephen had scratches all over his face, which he didn't have on Friday. Stephen told him he had gotten the scratches at work. He was a landscape gardener. When it came to his Facebook activities, Luke told the police he had a habit of be befriending everyone on Facebook and became instant friends. During investigation, the police also discovered Luke was grooming other underage girls at the same time as Kaylee. And his Facebook activities showed Luke was indeed a predator. He had an interest on having sex with drunk unconscious girls and he wanted to keep them as a slave. In April 2016, Stephen pled guilty to assault and murder. After assaulting Kaylee, he ran after her. He pinned her down. She fought back and he killed her with a brick. Kaylee left scratches on his face. Luke admitted to grooming and engaging in sexual activities. He pled guilty to attempting to meet two other girls who were also 15 years old for sexual purposes and also a 13 year old. He lured them with sweet talks and made them feel special. Luke pled not guilty for false imprisonment. So he went to trial. During trial, it became obvious Luke was a predator. Stephen's lawyer asked Luke if he had assaulted Kaylee while she was asleep. And this caused, allegedly, an argument between Luke and Stephen, which caused Kaylee to wake up and tragedy happened. Stephen stated he wasn't able to form a relationship with women and he had had dark thoughts about them for about two years. At the end of the trial, Luke was found guilty of false imprisonment. Luke was sentenced to 12 years in prison, not enough, and Stephen was sentenced to life in prison with the minimum sentence of 35 years. On April 8, 2021, Stephen died from cardiac arrest and cerebral hypoxia in hospital while in police custody.